Hey there. Uh, thank you very much for having me today. And Tara, thank you for that work that you do for a mother of four children. So it's really important. Um, so uh, I'm Jill Sharkazy, founder of Safekeeping Stories. We run small group workshops online and for organizations that help people write a short and engaging story about their parents and grandparents. Um, we teach them a method of writing called story keeping that makes it easy for anybody to write about their family. You don't have to have any special writing uh, skills. Um, and I've been doing this for about a decade uh, after a career as a lawyer um, in New York City. Uh, and I think I'm a little more suited for what I'm doing right now. Um, I like helping people move from overwhelm to really understanding what's important about their multi-generational story and what really needs to be passed along to their kids. My father-in-law is a Hungarian Holocaust survivor. And uh, one of my most meaningful projects has been the workshop I created and facilitated for the Holocaust and Human Rights Education Center. It helps children and grandchildren of Holocaust survivors write their story. Um, for me, uh, I got started in this because I didn't know a lot about my family. Uh, I moved to a small town, Johnson City, Tennessee, after my parents divorced. My dad's family was from Atlanta and he didn't tell me that much about it. Um, and when I moved up here to practice law, I married a New Yorker and stayed for 29 years, raising four children, as I mentioned. And I really felt like a fish out of water. I was a Southerner among Northerners. And learning that my family actually lived in the town where I live now and have lived here for generations was incredibly grounding. And I didn't want my kids to have to find out who they were from a box of documents. So kind of from there is where Safekeeping Stories was born. Okay. Um, so in the case, I'm here to talk about story and the story of your family and what you're passing on. And the truth of that is whether you're aware of it or not, first of all, you've been shaped by the generations that came before you and you've inherited a narrative. Their stories have played a significant role in creating who we are. I mean, we hear it right now in our families and our experiences and how it's shaped everything that we do. Um, and you're passing along to your kids a narrative about your family, who you are, who they are, whether they know it or not, because our stories are their stories too. So, you know, you can ignore that truth and you can carry on and pass this family knowledge along implicitly and you can hope for the best or you can take the opportunity. It doesn't take that long, actually. The hardest thing is to sit down and do it. it just takes a few weeks. Um, and not very many pages. Uh, and you can make your story conscious. Uh, you can have agency, actually, in that story that's still unfolding and contribute to the narrative that you're passing along. And by doing that, you actually have the ability to impact the trajectory of the way your children and their children and their children and so on understand themselves their family and their place in the world. And that's really powerful. Um, so, uh, you know, how does that happen? What I see is in this process of finding the words, because I actually encourage people to only write in very small quantities because nobody wants some giant story of everything that happened. They actually, you know, what's gold if you find it, like a letter from, you know, that, that really says some important truth uh, uh, from your grandmother or something. Uh, so, you know, I seek to create that about a dozen pages at the most for a multi-generational story. And so through that process of really picking those words, your story takes on meaning of who you are, of your values and principles you've gleaned from being part of your family or in reaction to your family. Um, and it can become a guidepost for the way you live your life. Um, you have something physical that you can give to your kids, and it can be a guidepost in the way that they live their life, and they can add to that meaning and pass it along to their kids. Um, and that's really the power of story. So.
Um, I'm really struck by how everybody here really is focused, is focused on the next generation. They're focused on their children, focused on your behavior, what you're doing today and how it will shape the future in, in small ways or, or large. And uh, one thing I just really want to tell everyone here, uh, actually in response to what I could hear from you, Jeannie, um, and of course, Stephen, your story is just <laughs> unbelievable and shaped what you're doing now as an attorney, making sure other people don't get away with things, you know, when they do harm, which I think is, you know, has impacted everything about who you are. But, you know, knowing your story uh, and is not just about knowing what's good. Uh, you know, you talk a little bit about making bad decisions and, you know, and we, and, and Stephen saying, you know, sometimes the bad things that happen to us are actually our best teachers. And um, so there's a lot of research out there uh, about family narratives um, and kids who know them are more resilient and have more confidence and all of this. But what I think is most interesting is when you craft a narrative, you don't want to just put everything that's good in there. Like people will get scared to tell their kids what's not good. But honestly, there's three kinds of narratives, okay? There's an ascending narrative, and that's about, you know, your grandfather came here, then we got to, you know, my, your, your dad went to college, and, and now you, you know, it just keeps going up. Uh, it's about all the good things that happen. Uh, then there's the descending narrative. It's like this bad thing happened, and then everything went down from there. But the healthiest narrative is actually the oscillating narrative, a high and low, good and bad. And if you can talk about the good and bad things that happened over time, what kids get to learn and hear from that is there are good times and bad times. We're always staying together as a family. You know, they made it through it. I can make it through it. You know, over hope, you know, a variety of things that they can get rooted in from that. So uh, I just kind of wanted to put that out there. I just felt like it was in the mix of, you know, a lot of the things that we were talking about today. And um, I have found for most people learning that about the oscillating narrative and the importance of telling that uh, has just really had a tremendous impact on people. So anyway. Well, I think that Everyone here is talking about small actions that can have huge impact. And they're the small actions that often are not the pressing ones of the day. They're not the immediate, you know, I got to do this today. Uh, but uh, they're the ones that are going to make you and your family stronger if you carve out the time to do them, whether it be tax planning estate planning, um, taking a step back before you go to a party to think about your alcohol consumption and what you're teaching your kids and talking to them about and teaching them um, or understanding the importance of uh, protecting your identity. I mean, I've had, unfortunately, that happened to me, Jeannie, and I know exactly what you're talking about. It's very violating and can be a huge problem. And it required a lot of extra time to, to, to clean up. And if I had done a few things ahead of time, I wouldn't have had to deal with that. So I think it's really important uh, to alert people to these things that they can do that will make life better. Music